Greetings all! Last Outrider here, who's going to deal with the question of what is the age of Ultron? Contrary to popular belief, I will not be talking about what will the next movie be. I don't need to, I already know. Age of Ultron is a storyline from the comics that's going to introduce characters like um, Wasp and Henry Pym, Ant-Man. It's also going to deal uh, as an entry to the next story, I believe it's the next Captain America story, which should be uh, Civil War, right? It should be Marvel Civil War. And all of this is going to be tied into an overarching storyline that's going to deal with the issue of what exactly is a superhero? I mean, we have a lot of these movies out now, and they're released internationally, but what is a superhero? This is never really and truly addressed. They tried to address it in the last two movies and got shut down hard. They tried to address it in Iron Man 3 with the Mandarin. Yeah, well, that, that, that got aborted halfway through the movie, I think right after Disney bought Marvel. Uh, they tried to address it in The Avengers, but uh, Joss Whedon's storyline was considered to have too much dialogue and too little punching. So that got rewritten. And now they're going to try to do it a third time in the Age of Ultron. Because Ultron is actually directly relates to this. Ultron is an artificial intelligence that was created by Tony Stark, Iron Man, and Henry Pym, Ant-Man, you'll see his movie, to deal with the question of what do you do with supervillains, with the super bad guys, after you defeat them? To this date, if you were a bad guy and defeated, you went on to become an involuntary participant in some human experimental program, medical experiments or something like that. They're going to dissect you and vivisect you until they find out what makes you tick. Uh, Nah, ask the Hulk about this. He's going to be the poster boy for what happens to bad guys. Human experimentation. This raises a lot of ethical questions, obviously, in terms of why is it a good thing to capture these bad guys and turn them over to various government organizations to be cut into little pieces? A uh, question you can ask Deadpool, which is another video you see out there saying, who is Deadpool? Go check it out. This is going to deal with that. Well, Tony Stark and Henry Pym come with an idea of creating a prison for super baddies called the Big House. Yes, it's an ironic name because in reality it was a normal sized prison and then using uh, Pym particles, Hank Pym shrinks it down to a molecular size. Uh, obviously there's very difficult to escape from that. Even if he did escape from it, you're going to be the size of, a, of an atom and of particles, and molecular particles, where you, what you're going to do. Ultron was the prison guard. Now, this prison was not designed for punishment. It was designed for rehabilitation and redemption. This then led to a moral, more moral and ethical deliberations of, is such a thing even truly possible? And that means, can you release these people back into society? Look at what happened to Magneto. He was just basically locked up into solitary confinement for eight years. Most people would consider that to be some form of torture. Leading to the question of, why would Professor X ever turn him back over to the government? They even said that back in, at the end of the movie, in Days of Future Past, where he said to him, you know if you give them me to them, they're just going to kill me. That's why the X-Men really brought to the point 
And why it became more popular, I think, the Avengers and Spider-Man and all of the typical superhero-y comics, of asking the question, what is a superhero? Let's deal with this question right now. A superhero is a vigilante. He is a criminal, or she, really, in every sense of the term. They are somebody who's taking the law into their own hands. And the real purpose of superhero stories is to ask the question, why are they doing this? Batman deal with this. Uh, Christopher Nolan does, dealt with this in the last Batman movie, where Batman gave away all of his billions, because everybody is coming to the clear conclusion that you cannot be wealthy and be a superhero at the same time. In fact, you cannot be a part of established society and be a superhero at the same time. Look at Hit Girl. If you really want to understand what a superhero is, watch the kick-ass movies. That's exactly what they dealt with. Watchmen tries to deal with it, but uh, I'm sorry, Zach. You did an excellent job of making a pictorial version of the comic, but in reality... As the writer said, you should actually just make a movie version of the comic. Uh, don't try to clone it. It's a completely different medium. So, what I'm going to address in the next issue, uh, next part of this video series is, to be a superhero means that you are somebody who has seen that there are gross injustices taking place, and that society is somehow broken and are not dealing with it. And that you, somehow, in your origin story of a superhero, got these remarkable powers and decided that if you had remarkable powers, you are going to change the world for the better. Now the question becomes, what is making things better? And that's what they do. They should be going out and dealing with the problems that society is not dealing with. That's a superhero. They are catching the bad guys that society is not catching. Another way you're going to see it is that, oh, I can got it. The Blacklist, if you've watched that US TV show with James Spader. And by the way, James Spader is the voice of Ultron. I don't think that's an accident. It's going to be coming down with dealing with the question of who are the real bad guys here? Do superheroes and the Avengers truly exist to protect the property, the property rights of profiteers like multinational corporations and big banks and corrupt governments and politicians and crap like that? Obviously not. So, what do they truly represent? Uh, Ultron's answer to this is that you want a world that's fair and just, but you also want the world to stay the same. These two things cannot exist at the same time. Now, as an artificial intelligent, he comes to the erroneous conclusion, then, that the only way to give humanity the peace according and justice according to the dictates that they were put into his programming is to wipe us all out. Basically, to have an Earth without humans on it is the ideal Earth. And he goes about trying uh, to make us extinct. Uh, that's a problem. But other superheroes are basically in the next Captain America 3, which should be a lead off on this. This, I mean, this should be a lead into, you know, talking about it will be uh, Marvel Civil War. Which brings up that question again. What is a superhero? Do we work for the government? Do we work for banks and corporates and, and fuckers like that? Or do we work for justice? Batman versus Superman is going to deal with the exact same question too, saying that Superman is just a follower. 
He's just uh, he's just somebody who a tool of the establishment. And Batman works for justice. That's that that's what that's going to be about. All of these are now going to make it very clear over the next year what a superhero is. And that's a vigilante. Somebody who takes the law into her hands and says, I'm going to make the world better. I'm going to deal with the real bad guys. The ones you never hear about. The ones that never show up in court. The ones that never get punished. I'll let you decide who those people are. But that's who superheroes are going to come after in future movies. That is the Age of Ultron. And I will see you next time. Bye.